Welcome to the Activated Storyteller 79th Podcast, May 31st, 2008. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are... The Activated Storytellers. And this week we are telling you all about our little trip to Hawaii, which we just returned from. Aloha oi. Yes, we just returned from Hawaii. We were there for one week, May 17th to 24th. And uh, we had a great time, so quite a bit of Oahu. And for me, it was a going home. I haven't. I used to live there and haven't been uh, back in quite some time. So I had a chance to take the guys around the island and show them my old stomping grounds. And what'd you think? I, I'm ready to go back. Can we go this week? <laughs> I wish we could. We stayed near Waikiki Beach. We went to Waikiki Beach one day and did some boogie boarding. The first day out, we took a tour of the island with uh, public transit. The bus over there is called, get this, The Bus. What a creative name. I love it. I love it. I mean, how You know, no nonsense. It's just called The Bus. That's the name of the transit. They also have The Cab and even The Boat. <laughs> Except people there are more likely to say the bus. Right, the bus. Yeah, that's the pidgin English they speak over there. Um, so our first day on the island, on Oahu, we took a tour of the island in the bus on public transit. And um, just kind of basically to get an overview of the island so that the guys could get around and see all there was to see and see how big the island is. And I have to say, for me, it was almost akin to being in Japan again because the Japanese influence there is so ridiculously heavy almost every sign says something in english and then in japanese you'd see signs on the bus that were in japanese we saw one shop that actually had signs all in japanese and then there was a sign on the window that said yes we speak english too that first day taking the bus tour we just uh, we got off at one stop and we went swimming you can go swimming just about anywhere you get off the bus in hawaii because there are beaches everywhere and the beaches all belong to you. There are no private beaches. They all belong to the public. The other thing we did that day is we took a little detour and we went to the Dole Plantation. And they have the world's largest... Maze. Maze, not meaning corn, but meaning a, a labyrinth of pathways that you walk through. So we did walk through that. We, we, took, uh, we took about an hour, at least some of us did, to walk through that and <laughs> got sunburned in the process. Well, it was fun. They have a, a quest, basically. You'd have to find eight different kiosks or little locations hiding from you. And it is not as easy as I thought it would be. Now, something I didn't know while we were there, I didn't find out until later, but James Dole, who founded the Dole Pineapple Company, actually it was originally called the Hawaiian Pineapple Company, I believe, and later became Dole. James Dole was the cousin of Sanford Dole, who at that time was president of the Republic of Hawaii because he deposed the queen. And another little tidbit about pineapple. I'm spoiled. I don't like eating pineapple in the mainland because I grew up with it in Hawaii. And in Hawaii, they pick it nice and ripe. And to get it over to the mainland, they have to pick a green to ship it. So much better in, the, in Hawaii. It does taste better, I have to admit. I like the pineapple we get here, but it does taste better over there. Okay. Much sweeter. So the next day. Okay, the next day we went to Pearl Harbor and uh, went out to take a look at the USS Arizona. Right, and very poignant trip, uh, very memorable. Um, I remember being there as, as a child, of course. And the thing that I think surprised me and, and everybody comments on is even now, 65 years after the uh, USS Arizona went down in Pearl Harbor, there's still oil coming up from it. As a matter of fact, it, it oozes between eight and nine quarts of oil a day. You can stand there. They have a platform built uh, on the water where you can stand and look over the Arizona, look down the water and see it down below. And you will see oil ooze up to the surface every now and then. Also, I, I can't believe that they actually just let the oil leak out like that. I, you'd think they'd do something about it. but I think they tried, but I heard there were some explosions when they did. The thing that I find really interesting is that there were a little over a thousand people on board the Arizona that day, and over 900 of them are still on board the Arizona. Okay, and then the next day we went to the Polynesian Cultural Center. 
And that is a special treat. And it's also the most money we spent on any of the things that we did. Uh, quite an expensive ticket, but an all-day event and a wonderful place to go. It's kind of like a living history museum, um, a lot along the lines of what they have in Plymouth Plantation. They have different sections of the park with each one dedicated to a different group of Pacific Islands. One would be Tahiti, one is Fiji, one is Hawaii, of course, uh, one New Zealand. And there used to be one for the Marquesas Islands, which uh, they don't have anyone there anymore because that group of islands has fewer than uh, 6,000 inhabitants left now. So they're kind of disappearing. They also have uh, Tonga and Tahiti as well. Welcome to the land of the long white cloud where mountains touch the sky, the first to greet the sun on each new day, an enchanted Aotearoa, you know it as New Zealand. And so there you get to experience the cultures, learn the the dances. They teach you some hula and dances and songs and games um, and and brought back memories. There was a game that I used to play as a child called the stick game. And uh, we used to play with poi balls. So it had the guys uh, learn how to do that. i tell you what I liked there is uh, spear throwing. The spear throwing was good, yes. And, of course, we had a luau in the evening. Luau with the hula dance show. And then uh, at, there's an evening show called Horizons, which features, the, you know, it's kind of a spectacular fire dancing, fire walking show with lots of hula, lots of singing, lots of dancing. And that was at an, uh, a big amphitheater, an outdoor theater. They also had an uh, IMAX presentation on coral reefs, which we found quite interesting. Makes me want to travel more, uh, definitely, seeing the coral reefs and all the beauty that there is in, in the world. And then on Wednesday, we went back to Kimberly's roots in Kailua. Right. I used to live in Kailua, and so I took the guys back. I got to see my old house, and they cut down all my trees. We used to have two coconut trees and three plumeria trees and a big mango tree in the back. We went by, saw the house, and visited the neighbors, and all my trees are gone. Some of them understandably, though, because apparently uh, the coconut trees got to be really big, the people who they'd pay to come and climb the coconut trees and retrieve the coconuts from the top, actually couldn't climb all the way to the top because the tree would become so tall that it was unstable at the top, and then they'd have dangers of coconuts falling on passersby on the sidewalk. So they've kind of had to cut a lot of those down. We went to the beach at Kailua that Kimberly used to go to as a child and uh, lost our camera and had it recovered. And uh, th- this beach is world-renowned now. Back then it was our little secret, but it is actually one of the best beaches in the world, um, Kailua Beach, the sand is like silk. Um, wonderful, wonderful beach. And also in Kailua, we met a gentleman named Wally Amos, whom you may have heard of. He's famous. He made famous Amos cookies. Which I understand uh, the brand is now no longer in his possession, but he does still run a, uh, a cookie shop in Hawaii, which we chanced upon because we had no idea it was even there, but we walked right by it and... Um, And we saw a poster of Wally Amos on the window, and uh, he walked right by us into the shop, and we all sort of did a double take and looked at each other, like, was was that him? I don't know. So we went up and talked to him, and uh, sure enough, it was. We we got our picture with him and everything. It was a delight to meet him. Um, Very dynamic character, and we're going to be doing a little bit more about him in an upcoming podcast, because he also has a program where he is promoting reading. Um, he's, it's very high on his list of priorities. Um, he's got a whole reading aloud program. He actually reads to children every Saturday afternoon at two o'clock there at his shop from what I gather. Okay. Then Thursday, we, uh, went to Hanama Bay and went snorkeling. I like the snorkeling. Now, from what I understand, uh, the day we visited was not optimal conditions for snorkeling, but if that wasn't optimal conditions, then I'd really like to see what was. What was going on in the islands when we were over there is one of the volcanoes, Haleakala and the big island, Hawaii, is venting off some steam. So we had a lot of volcano ash in the sky, or as they like to say, vog. It was very voggy and got very dark. So not optimal conditions for seeing the fish, but I tell you, you cannot put a mask on, put your face in the water, 
and not see a fish when you're over in Hanama Bay. It's amazing. It's the closest to fish I've ever gotten. And, and some of them were big fish. They would just swim right up in your face and say hello. Yeah, they had rainbow parrot fish, and you could hear them. That amazed me. As you're swimming along or just kind of floating along and watching the fish, you hear a... And it's the fish with beaks. They kind of have like a hard beak, and they are pecking at the, uh, the rock. Yeah, and there, there were varieties of fish that I never knew existed, and some of them were just beautiful. And uh, this was a, at a coral reef in Hanama Bay, so you can swim out over the coral, and the fish play around the rocks there. Now, we've been snorkeling once before in Florida, but i got to say the variety of fish and the, the kinds of fish that we saw was nowhere near as great. A lot of tropical fish, and I actually was lucky enough to see a sea turtle, which I didn't realize was there until I turned around and saw it face to face with me. But um, I saw a sea turtle, and like Mom said, you can't put on a mask and get in the water without seeing fish. I was actually in about four to six inches of water, and I happened to put my face in, and a whole school of fish swam right in front of my face. So they are even in the extremely shallow water. Right. They are everywhere. And uh, they have wrasse fish, um, all, all kinds of varieties of fish. Some are very white and blend in with the sand. Some are very colorful and uh, a whole bunch. They, they say that sometimes you'll even spot an octopus up there by the shore. Right. And I'm going to try to pronounce the name of my favorite fish. It is a pretty small fish, but it's got a long name. It is the Humahuma Nuku Nuku Pu'u'a. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you can take that word. And that was my birthday. What a great way to celebrate your birthday, to go snorkeling at Hanama Bay. Best birthday I ever had. And then the next day, Friday, it was our last day there, and we took a hike through a little rainforest. Yeah, I've been wanting to uh, see some of the tropical foliage for a while, um, and so we went hiking in the rainforest up to the falls. What, what were the falls called? Manoa Falls, and I still have Manoa mud on my shoes. Yeah, it's a very muddy hike. It's also a very steep hike. For the most part, it's pretty easy going, but the last bit gets kind of steep, and I personally was fine with it. A lot of the tourists seem to have trouble getting up and down. So, Well, they were wearing flip-flops. And this was the only place in Hawaii you know, where we saw or felt mosquitoes. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, but it's a rainforest, and it's a bamboo rainforest. On Oahu is where they shot Jurassic Park, and we did go by the place one day where they shot it. A couple of times we went by there, in fact. This was not the place where they shot Jurassic Park. You mean Manoa Falls is not the place where they shot it? Right. Okay. They shot it at Kualoa Ranch. Right, Kualoa Ranch, and that's also where they're shooting Lost, if anybody follows Lost. And then that afternoon was when we went to Waikiki Beach, and what a great time that was. And that's when I let the Kama Aina in me come out, and I showed the boys how to boogie board. And finally, finally got boogie boarding to work. It's been so hard for me to catch a wave and really ride it up to the shore, but I did. I almost bowled over a couple of tourists standing on the sand once. <laughs> I didn't bowl over any tourists, um, but I did bowl over myself several times. Okay, and, and that was our last day. The next day, unfortunately, we had to come back to the mainland. Didn't want to come back at all. Although I have to say probably my least favorite thing about coming back to the mainland has been adjusting back to the time zone difference because I'm still getting back into this time zone. It is three hours earlier there than on the west coast where we are now. So yes, it, it does take a little getting used to. We're back though. We did a, a show today. We did Zephyr's last performance with us today. That's right. Zephyr is retiring. Has retired. It's done. You've retired. Officially, as far as performing goes, I, I am retired. Okay, so we're getting ready to head to Reno, which is where we get our new show together. And uh, we're going to start touring libraries for the summer really soon here. So we'll be discussing Wally Amos and his reading program in the next episode. We have been getting some comments and just want to encourage and remind everybody that this uh, next podcast we're going to be doing, the person who has won the drawing will be named a character in, in a story that we do. So we're all looking forward to that. And uh, if you'd like to be considered for the Be a Character contest or you would just like to leave us comments, please give us a call at 206-202-3976. That's 206-202-3976. You can leave comments, tell us what you think about the podcast, and leave us your name. We'll consider putting you, or we will do a drawing and see if you are going to be a character in our Be a Character contest. And I would also like to say that although I'm not going to be performing anymore, you'll still be able to hear me on the podcast. So keep listening because you still have a reason to listen as long as I'm here. You mean we can't get rid of you? 
Rats. <laughs> That'll do it for this time. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. Aloha. The Activated Storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time. Blueberry. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No ease. That's Blueberry. B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry.com.